In this mini-series, we're going to introduce you to all 30 athletes taking part in this year's World's Strongest Man. We're going to be looking at their story so far, how we think they'll do in the events, and how we rate their overall chances. And today we're going to be looking at the Highland Oak, Luke Stoltman. So we first met a young Luke Stoltman at the 2013 Britain Strongest Man. And this was a time when Luke failed a 150 log for reps. He failed to get a single rep. And now he is established as one of the absolute best log lifters on the planet. I clearly remember a young Luke Stoltman turning up in Gateshead for Britain's Strongest Man. Failed the log, he's gone on to become one of the best log lifters in the world. And the last few years, he's really stepped up. For a while, he was kind of just making steady progress, but he's, he's been one of those athletes that didn't burst onto the scene from a young age. He's steadily got better and better. And I think the real transition from Luke was 2019, mm. where he placed second at the World Ultimate Strongman in an absolutely stacked lineup. That was the moment we thought he is a legitimate contender for big titles. Yeah, in that competition, he beat the likes of Alexei Novikov, Brian Shaw, JF Karan, some huge names. And that was also the first year that he made it into the final of the World's Strongest Man. Since then, he's gone on to win two Giants Live competitions. A really huge one for him was winning Europe's Strongest Man just last year, 2021. Amazing performance there. And then he went on and won the World Tour Finals up in Glasgow. Two Giants lives in the same year, made the final of World's Strongest Man. He's established himself as one of the best presses in the world. And he's lost that jovial attitude that he used to have. Maybe not lost it. Yeah, he has, and, yeah. he, and he's got a real focus when you mm. see him competing now. He truly believes he can win the World's Strongest Man. And he's going there this year to bring it home to Scotland again. Home to the same family, but with a different winner. Looking at the events and the heats then, we know it's really difficult to say how someone's going to do when we don't know who they're up against. But just looking at Luke as an athlete based on his track record, the first event is the loading race. And Luke is very, very good at loading. He was exceptionally good as a youngster, kind of smaller athlete getting into the sport, but he hasn't lost that speed as he's got bigger. I mean, he has got a lot bigger. He's packed some beef onto that body. He's got those huge arms, that gigantic ass. But he can still move it. He really can. He's a fast athlete and loading. He's backed up time and time again with solid performances. So going into this year's World's Strongest Man, he's going to want to start well. All the athletes, it's so important that you start this competition well because you're so nervous before that first event. Mm. And if you get off to that good start, it settles things down. You're then in a position where you've got events coming up where you've got a better idea of how you're going to do. The loading, even though you can be really good at it, it's one of those events that is possible to make mistakes on. So it is a pressure cooker situation. Everyone wants to get a good start and I'm sure Luke will be looking for first, second place in that first event. That's where he's gonna to wanna to be. That will settle the nerves knowing he's got good events to come. So the next event will be an interesting one. It's the deadlift ladder. Notoriously not his best event, but he did pretty well at, at Europe's Strongest Man. Yeah, he actually performed really well at Europe's Strongest Man, getting four of the five implements. No one managed to get all five. No. He was slower out of the athletes that did the fourth, but I actually think the deadlift ladder suits Luke more than a deadlift for reps or a deadlift for max. He's not quite the best when it comes to the, to the top end strength. But he's got great leg power. His drive off the floor is actually very powerful. So he can use that power to get the bar over the, the knees and then just about lock it out. Because you're not going up to the ridiculous weights when it's a medley, he's still got that leg power to sort of compensate for the lack of lockout power. And I think he couldn't really ask for a better deadlift at World's Strongest Man. Okay. I still think he's gonna to wanna to be in a good position from the loading event. And I think a mid-score, like a mid-table score on the deadlift sets him up 
beautifully for the rest of the events coming. So the next event in the heats is the car walk. And again, another event that Luke didn't used to be so good at. No, it's an event he's really made rapid progress on over the last couple of years. You go back to the early stages of Luke, he wasn't that good when it came to moving with weights. But you look at his recent performances on car walks and yokes, he's actually scoring really big points, top three in most competitions that he's done performing exceptionally well. Last year at World's Strongest Man, he was moving rapidly, quickly with the farmers and the yoke equipment. So I'm expecting a big performance here. You look at the car walks that he's done in the Giants live shows, he's got experience on that type of equipment. He's performing well, he's moving quickly. I think he's gonna do good points again. Next is probably Luke's worst event in the group. It's the wrecking ball hold, a test of grip. Yeah, I'd agree. When you look at the results, it's not that he's got a bad grip, but he hasn't performed well historically when it comes to grip type events. Mm. So I do know personally, he's been putting a lot of time into training the grip as his brother Tom as well. It could be the one event that holds him back a little bit though. It might cost him maybe being able to win the group. I still expect him to put in a solid performance and he's got some great events, which is nice to have as a banker. And we'll talk about the stones in a minute, but he's a decent stone lifter as well. Okay. But I think the deadlift and potentially the grip hold are the two events that maybe give other athletes the, the window of opportunity to sneak in there. He needs to get good performances on those two to guarantee easy sail into the final. But then he'll come out of the grip and into an event that he'll hopefully feel very comfortable in. It's the log lift for reps. Absolutely. You know, it's going to come to the log and either things have gone perfectly and he can take his foot off the gas or he knows he's going to have to work hard. But when you know it's an event you feel comfortable on, you have that security, if you like. It's like a nice warm, snug blanket cuddling you. You think, all right, I'm in a little bit of trouble, but I've got this banker. And there's really not many people in the world that can beat Luke Stockman when it comes to log lift for repetitions. I expect maximum points in his group. He's won so many log lift events now. He's just got that confidence. It oozes out of you. When you start winning events time and time again, you just walk into them believing that you're going to win. Yeah. And that's a nice position to be in. So I'm sure if he needs to go flat out, he'll do as many as he needs to to get the win on that event. So if Luke doesn't win the group, he may find himself in the stone off. How do we think? Now, this is a position he's been in a couple he's of times. He's been in it in a few well. times and it's gone his way and it's gone against him before. Mm. We've seen that, you know. A number of times he's been in this position where it's come down to the stone off. I remember him against Rob Kearney a few yeah. years back, and, you know, great friends and they battled through and he got the better of Rob. He's been on losing situations as well on a stone off. He's a better athlete these days, mentally so strong. He didn't used to be mentally as strong. These days he works with psychiatrists, you know, he, believe, he does a lot of things. The ice water challenges that he yeah. does, doesn't do it for recovery as much. A lot of it is just that mental toughness, making himself go through difficult situations. So he's getting to competition and he's just used to being tough and digging deep. I think if it comes to a stone off, there's always exceptions. You don't want him against, you know, certain people. But I think for the most part, if it does come to him in a stone off, he's getting to the final. So that being said, I think we agree. We kind of expect Luke to get to the final. I do, yeah. He's he's established himself as one of the absolute top guys over the last couple of years. And I, I would be shocked if he doesn't make the final. And the first event there is the box carry into yoke. And we've already mentioned his yoke, car walk type events have improved loads over the last few years. He's performed well in these type of events at World's Strongest Man. Yeah. His loading is good, so I don't expect the boxes to be an issue, and his yoke has just got better every single time I've seen him. I know he's training it hard. He's, he could potentially be the best we've ever seen on this type of event, and it could be a good start for him in the competition. Next, we have the deadlift again, and unfortunately, this time it's for reps, and I'm sure Luke would have absolutely killed for a squat in the finals this year. Luke would have definitely liked the squat in the final. That being said, he's made mistakes on squats yeah. when we look at the Arnolds and stuff like that. And his deadlift is slowly improving. The problem for Luke is everyone is a good deadlifter. Yeah. You know, you can be a 380 deadlifter at World's Strongest Man, and that is a weak deadlift. You've got to be in the 400 plus 420 mark to be considered one of the, the really better guys. And this is where he may drop some points. It can often come down to actually who makes the final, because yeah. you could have the best deadlifters that suddenly don't make the final, and he'll, he'll place a bit higher. One thing we know with Luke, he'll give it his all. You know, it's an event that he knows... Sometimes with reps as well, and I've been in this position before, you might not be as good as someone else when it comes to a max, 
but if you're within range, say it's 20 kilos difference within range, you can sometimes match them. Mm. So you might get everything. Use the timing perfectly to just get that fifth rep, for Squeeze instance. One out. <laughs> Someone might make a mistake of trying to blast through five really quickly and burn themselves out or miss yeah. a rep. So there is that. And he, he, you know, when it's reps, you do get a lot of joint points. I think that helps him a little bit. But this is the event that could maybe cost him the biggest amount of points in the final. So we know how much Luke loves overhead and it's a max overhead in the final, but it's the Flintstone lift, either in front or behind the neck. I love your little action. Thank there. you. Yes. <laughs> this is just a visual aid. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I think Luke would rather there was a log in the final. Yeah. You know, when you look at the log, he's won the log in the final of World's Strongest Man. He's won the um, log in many big internationals. The Flintstone lift is a slight variation of an overhead press. And although I expect him to be good, it puts him into the beatable mark. You know, I think if it was a log for Max, he's guaranteed top points. I think he still scores well here, yeah. but there's guys that could potentially beat him who may have better technique, a little bit more explosiveness, and understand a behind-the-neck jerk-type movement a little better than maybe Luke does. I still expect big points, but I think he would have preferred a log for Max. Next, the bus pull, a World's Strongest Man classic. Yeah, you've got to be good at pulling vehicles to win World's Strongest Man. This is, when you look at the history of Luke, maybe not a best event for him as well. I think last time he was fifth on the Titans turntable, which is a little variation because it's about pushing something. Um, he was second in his heat last time he did a truck pull at World's Strongest Man, second to half Thor Bjornsson, half Thor, one of the greatest truck pullers there is. And then you go back that, can we really use some of those older mm. truck pull um, competition results to... He looks changed a lot. Yeah, since like I said, day. since 2019, he's made humongous progression. Mm. I know Dan, his coach, has been making him train these type of events. So if he's well prepared and is technically good, he has all the tools to be a good truck puller. He's got good body weight. He's got great, powerful legs. Big ass. <laughs> big ass again. <laughs> Obsessed with his big ass. But if he maximizes the the, the, the size yes. of it and the power that is potentially there yeah. truck pull could potentially be a good event i just need to see him back it up with good technique <laughs> i was worried about what you could need to see <laughs> i just yeah no i think he can be good at the truck pull yeah it's time to prove it though now make sure training's gone well and absolutely smash it because it's going to be an important event you can't really afford two weaker events in the uh, World's Strongest Man final. So if he is looking to win, he needs to be placing fifth or higher, really. He cannot afford to come lower than fifth. Next then, another exciting, well, I think it's exciting event at World's Strongest Man is the Power Stairs. Something we've only seen Luke do once, and that was very recently at Europe's Strongest Man. Yeah, and the Europe's Strongest Man setup was a little bit lighter than we may see at World's Strongest Man. I know they took one of the weights out. Um, he performed well at it, he came fourth in that competition, but it doesn't give me enough to really tell what he's going to be like in a bigger competition or more really good athletes that mm. are going to be competing there. Again, he's powerful, he's explosive. Those big legs can cause problems with power stairs. So, mm, you know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to come down to how he's prepared on it. Yeah. I think if he's prepared well... Could perform well this is a this is going to be one of those events that there's not going to be a whole lot of history for a lot of the athletes to, for us to really look into mm -hmm. so fourth place he placed at europe's strongest man on the power stairs that's the best result i can see i think if you can match a fourth place he'll be pleased and finally we're ending on the atlas stones slightly different this year because they're going to have to run it in a little aren't they yeah and that's a little bit more draining can cause you to expend more energy by the time you get to the heavier stones and it's it's a little bit more nerve-wracking, especially mm. when there's a pressure situation. And unfortunately for Luke last year, he felt the pressure when it came to the Atlas Stones. It's funny when you look at Luke's history on Atlas Stones. He's a great stone lifter, but he's literally placed everywhere from first to tenth place yeah. on the Atlas Stones. First, second, third, all the way up to tenth in various different competitions. Really interesting looking at that. But it shows that Stones comes down to what position you're in in that last last place and also can you cope with the pressure yeah because he was in a really strong position and he dropped then to seventh place i think he was third going into the stones at yeah, last he was in final. a really good position will that play on his mind when it comes to the yeah. stones he's got to block that out and like we say he's working with people to help that mental strength i'm sure it's not going to be an issue but luke 
has performed very, very well on stones before. He's done stones many, many times in many competitions. And as I say, placed everywhere, but he's often won. And he's won big competitions when it's come to stones as well. So I think, I think he's going to be confident. He has to be, you know, you can't go into World's Strongest Man believing that you're going to win and then suddenly think you're not capable. Yeah. You know, you've got to keep that strong mindset. Time, time to perform. He's... He's been one of those athletes that's got steadily better and better and better each year. I've written him off before and he's proved me completely wrong. I'm not going to write him off anymore. So how are we faring Luke's chances overall? I, I mean, we've said we think he'll get make it out of the groups, but Luke has had some really, really tough groups these yes. last couple of years. Like last year he had Alexi, Bobby Thompson, Kevin Ferris. The year before he was in Brian Shaw's group with Ivor Schmuxless and Terry Hollands. He's not had an easy ride in the group stages. He's never really he's never been seeded. No, he's always had a tough time of it in the groups. And, you know, it might not be any different this year. The groups are going to be stacked. The events, he's got good and a couple of weaker events in there. But I do expect him to make the final. I think if he gets to the final, he's actually going to relax a bit more yeah. and feel confident that he's going to place high. For me, when I look at positionings and where I think someone can place, I think he's just outside of a podium position mm. i think he's going to come somewhere between six and fourth okay. that's kind of where i think when you look at the events there's a couple of just events maybe he would have preferred a few different ones in there i think he would have preferred a log for max over say the behind the neck press and maybe I the think... ladder the deadlift ladder over for reps or a squat instead of uh, deadlift yeah. for reps in the final. but you've got to cope with the events that are handed to you yeah. and he's improved ridiculously fast over the last few years yeah. and to keep improving like he has is a testament to his mental strength his team around him you know his nutrition everything he's doing right to keep getting better you know he's 37 years old going into this world's strongest man there's not been many guys that have won worlds at that age so it's now or never for luke mm. this is his chance to prove that he is making a legacy along with his brother world's strongest man tom stoltman 2021 can it be Luke Stoltman 2022? We absolutely wish him the best. He's a great guy, great ambassador for Strongman, and we know he's going to turn up and give 100%.